It is a world of darkness. The sin of Cain has spawned the cursed horror that stalks the night in search of living blood. The kindred have long been a secret influence through all ages of human history, plotting against each other in a never-ending jihad. Their immortal progeny are among us to this day, hidden from the eyes of humanity by an elaborate masquerade.
six demons. Bang! That bow dance, I like the fire cause it make him. I'm not tired, I've been waiting. I'm not forsaken. I'm my own and I'm jaded. Energy comes from my hatred. Call me the villain, cause I be killing. I got no feeling, I've been dealing with all my demons. I like to feed them, they be chilling. Yeah, they be screaming. I can hear them in my mind. They just wanna find any fight, Welcome any reason. To the dark side. There ain't no place to hide All your fears are electrified Welcome to the hard side Where it's all do or die Where the shadow to the light I can feel it in my bones I'm addicted to the thoughts I ain't never let it go Even when it hurts This is my curse I'm the king, bring me everything that I've ever wanted, that I need I believe I could be anything, watch me Give me a second to blow, give me a second to grow Be at the top of the show, be at the top like a pro I flip the switch, different mode, no they ain't laughing, no joke Cause I attack when they want Welcome to the dark side, there ain't no place to hide All your fears are electrified, welcome to the hard side Where it's all do or die, where the shadow to the light I can feel it in my bones I'm addicted to the thirst I ain't never letting go Even when it hurts This is my curse So I have to get up at 6.30 and no that's, why fun. I, that's why I'm late coming back. It's going to be fun though. Ta-da! We are back, we are live, and we are discussing uh, Brittany's love life. Choir practice. Um, <laughs> choir practice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I knew what she was talking about without having actually heard most of the conversation. I just wanted to see her face. Wow, those are big eyes that I see over there. <laughs> yeah, that's the look I usually get when uh, Jerome has said something t stupid. So <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so we are back. We are live once again uh, with Ashland by Night, uh, Blood Ties. Um, and now that we are done with uh, the Dark West, um, we're going to have Vampire again, uh, the regular Vampire Ashland by Night game next friday so things are probably going to be picking up here uh story wise for uh for both games uh at this point <clears throat> so does somebody want to give us a uh, a brief recap uh, aka steven since you did the notes last time and we need a volunteer for notes this game i'm doing oh. it okay um a brief recap yeah there was a lot that was covered i'm gonna i'm gonna bare bones it um we covered the scene at the tunnel and uh, Trudy, Maris, and Revis were the initial ones that got involved in that. Um, and eventually we determined that um, information related to that uh, needed to be kind of controlled because of the fact that it involved the Sabbat and a member of the community. So we kind of decided to leave that well enough alone after determining that Trudy was indeed innocent of any wrongdoing per se. Mm -hmm. And that Agia, the gargoyle, also really hadn't 
been involved in any wrongdoing. And we were trusting Trudy to continue to educate her properly. Uh, we skipped on from that to the discussion about how disciplines should be um, clarified and when they're taught. Um, that involved uh, Seth and Revis and Damaris and Trudy having a discussion about the incident at the club um, in which um, two of them pointed out that all three of us had um, contributed to the problem and none of us were innocent of um, not making it worse and that it should be called quits at that point because they didn't really want to sort all the mess out. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> after that, um, we talked to the new Lissambra and he was brought to the site and didn't come in because there was a ward on the room that he could perceive, um, which intrigued all of us. So we all checked out to talk to him. He's we, very suspicious. Yeah, let's not go there yet. Um, we're still in the recap. <laughs> uh, everyone went outside to talk to him because he was not coming in. Uh, we learned some interesting facts about him. That's Ryan. Yes, that's Ryan. Don Donaher? Danaher. Yep. Danaher. Danaher. I can't read my writing. Uh, <laughs> he has some interesting skills which the community would like to utilize on his behalf. However, he is, as noted earlier, rather hard to deal with on occasion. Not unfriendly, just very suspicious, and um, it makes it difficult to work with him. Uh, after that, Rivas kind of was out of the conversation as the ladies turned to discussing diablerie, Seth struggle with some events, problems with the gargoyle, etc. And it was all basically nothing Rivas was involved in. And he eventually left to go back to Absinthe and Malice because he'd got a message from the other Settite. Debene, whatever his name is at this point, I'm not recalling it properly, but the other said I, and he put it off for about half the night. Finally, when I need to go, ladies, I need to see what's what's going on and gets to the club. And there he's told that the club has been given to the other said I, which didn't really come as a surprise because Rivas was not supposed to get involved in owning a business in the town. He was supposed to be involved in maintaining open lines of communication with the anarchs. So Revis really didn't have any cause for complaints and kind of suspected it was coming anyhow. Um, he was told to go back to focusing on what his real purpose was. And that's not to say that the others said I didn't score a one up on him and Revis will not forget it, but it's, uh, what do you call it? Clan politics and that's the way it goes. It happens. Um, he got uh, an envelope with cash in it, not a lot, but not a token either. And he sent 50 of that over to Steph as part of the arrangement he had with her and as a way to go, hey, I'm sorry, it's not under my control anymore. Okay. He also notified the Baroness that the club would give it to the other Sedite um, and informed her that apparently he had not achieved his goal of opening up a wrestling site. And that's kind of where it ended. Okay, well, we are now back in game uh, at this point with our recap. Uh, some so at this point we're probably about two nights uh, from the events of last game, uh, and at this point since we haven't done it for a while, uh, everybody is starting off at full blood. You are down one blood for every ghoul that you maintain. We need to roll for XP too. Uh, yeah, that too. Um, but so we need to. Uh, so first we're going to deal with the blood. So take care of all ghouls that you have uh, in your retainer. Mm -hmm. So that's one apiece. Also one for any feeding restrictions that you might have. And Davey gave a shout out for yay, full blood. <laughs> and like a paycheck, it got drained real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Not my problem this yeah. time. <laughs> All the ghouls have gone somewhere else. Uh, you still have to maintain the ghouls. Um, 
I was told they'd been repurposed by They Steve. have. So okay. are you relinquishing your ghouls? Oh, I believe when he said repurposed that they were no longer that they're no longer my responsibility. But they're no longer at the uh, at the uh club, yes. So oh, okay. are you also I misunderstood. Relinqu- that's my bad. I'm nope, just clarifying are you, are you also relinquishing your ghouls? Nope. Okay. No, that was my bad. I thought that's what that meant. My okay. misinterpretation. No problem. So that's minus two for me. Okay. And herd is only one, and I'll have to do that in game. Okay. All righty. So everybody set? Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Uh, so Damaris, you have received your notification of the property. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't difficult uh, to obtain. Okay. Um, it's it, it's in a it basically it's it's way outside of town, so it's not like it was going to cost much. The only thing that the city ever really clarified was like there's no mineral rights or anything of right. that nature that's in that area. You, however, still need to invest and do your influence checks and whatnot if you're going to start attempting to build that up. Yes, and I wanted to start with that by looking through basically the the clientele that Anzios has had over the years. Okay. Um, to see if there are potentially any links to anybody that might have dined there that has any sort of foot in the door for... Um, industry even um like bureaucracy and things like that like for like even a court reporter or something that would get her in the door okay so i uh we'll get i'll get back with you on that one that's obviously going to take a bit yeah uh because that's that's a long list of people that they kind of illegally have to sort through uh, because no one gave that permission to <laughs> collect that info, but sure, they can they can definitely go through past receipts uh, and names and try to compile that. Because basically, they're going to have to compile that first, and then you're going to have to pay somebody to run checks basically against everybody. That's see fine. if they I'll recognize reach out to anybody. Ben and maybe do background checks and stuff like that. Sure. So, um, okay. I also wanted to reach out to. Uh, have I gotten any response from um, the Boston Prince, Sean, about Roxy? Oh. I left um, him a voicemail. Yes, and, yes, yes. Um, yeah. Has uh, he yeah. Uh, no, he did. Uh, but he left, he left a message just indicating that he is uh, typically very busy. Um, and this isn't something that uh, they would discuss over the phone. So when right. you were available, uh, he will... Uh, he will let his uh, sheriff know when to expect you. Okay. I don't know if I can travel to Boston. Road <laughs> trip. Yeah, right? Uh, um, Airplane. just for her to travel. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> there are so many bad places to travel by car between here and there. I don't even want to think about it. Just crossing okay. the great empty Midwest. That's where Ben and Seth can take their vacation. Um, I also (laughs) wanted to basically uh, spend some time um, basically just sort of watching the occult bookstore. Um, I'm going to utilize the ability to to get in or to use animals to sort of watch it um, like a dog or a cat that might be just around just to sort of basically stake it out, just kind of get a feel of who goes in and out of it. At this point. So are you asking basically an, an animal to watch it or are you using some high level of animalism to jump into the I'm body? I'm using to watch animalism it? to jump into the body. Okay. That's what I meant. Sorry. No, uh, that's, fine. that's why I want to double check. Or I think it is. So go ahead and make that roll then. And what type of uh, animal are you going to call? Um, I'm going to... I'm gonna look for like perhaps like a like an owl or something, some sort of bird um, that can easily just be like propped up on the roof or watch from a distance. Um, I don't know what kind of birds are common around here. Bats. Uh, I'm not gonna do a bat. <laughs> so, 
Pigeon, not a bird. Um, uh, pigeons, uh, ravens. Um, oh, let's do a raven. That's a good idea. Owls, obviously. Certain types of falcons. Uh, well, let's do a raven. I like okay. that idea. Quote the smart. raven, nevermore. Yep. Uh, all right, and then for animalism, I... So you're attempting to subsume the spirit. You need yes. to make a manipulation and animal kin roll. Difficulty eight. Animal kins. Okay, so it's okay. I'm rolling seven. It's not bad. Get in the chat. Sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to get the syntax going. That's fine. Uh, space eight, and then for the specialty, another space. Um, or. Okay. So this means um, with your connection to the animal currently, you can use uh most of your uh mental uh mm -hmm. or emotional level manipulation disciplines but you can't use anything else okay that's fine so i'll basically just sort of um perch on sort of maybe a i don't know a power line or anything that would get me within sort of just watching distance and just kind of looking around or i can or percept right yeah Okay, I'll be doing that um, as yeah, well. A, that's a mental discipline. Yeah. So uh, that means pretty much you can do almost anything with the exception of physical-based disciplines and blood magics. Yep. Cool. So I am, and yeah, that, I'm basically going to orb people. Background? That's Riley. Oh, is that Riley? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's only one over there. That's Riley. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, he's just there, huh? judging <laughs> it's ironic i should have picked a cat <laughs> um okay yeah so i'll basically just be sort of staking out spending an evening or two staking out um in those two nights that we had um basically watching see who goes in and out that kind of thing sure so you you spend this time this is the second night uh you spend time kind of watching who goes in and out a, a lot of uh, it get, the occult store gets a lot of foot traffic from uh, the occult curious. Usually uh, kids who may have seen some horror movie one, uh, one too many times or were fans of the craft. Uh, or maybe they just like Edgar Allan Poe too much. Um, Do I catch any magical auras potentially? No. Like even on the building? No, no, like no, no, that? no. So uh, very no. low key. Okay. Yeah, not, nothing like that. All, all very low key. Um, so it's it gets a it, it tends to get a decent amount of foot traffic. It's hard to say if it's doing a lot of business, but it's definitely getting people you know kind of coming in and out, looking at it as a, a curiosity. Like definitely a place uh, people come to at least window shop. Okay. Uh, but as you uh, continue to watch, you do end up uh, spotting somebody uh, come walking in. Uh, you've seen him before, and he is, he, he looks very much like, I want to say, a classic goth. So, wearing a lot of black, but not like the, the you know, all the, sh the face shrapnel and, and leather working and whatnot, like you'd see more modern types. Mm -hmm. Just, a, just a very, a, you know, I'm a black shirt, black pants, pale skin, black hair kind of guy. Yeah, that does sound familiar. I've uh, have I met him before? Did we meet him when? Um... You've met him once. His name is Troy. That's okay. We met him when we were there with Bastion, right? Or not uh, Bastion. I don't ben. remember Bastion. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Ben Hamid. Troy. Yeah, and I forgot with Troy is he? I don't remember what. That's he a was. great question. Consult your notes. I am. Oh god, I have so many notes to go back on. That's a wave file I need. I need to make just like a game show host voice. 
it's time to consult your notes. And then some random cheers in the background. Well, oh, is he a Google employee? That is definitely a guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a note here. This is Ghoul Employee Bookstore, Cult Bookstore. Well, I'm going to aura percept him then because I forgot. I yeah. thought I wrote it down. Let so. it rip. So <sighs> we now sure need uh, for Auspex, it is. Uh, what was it? It was. Um, why am I forgetting it all of a sudden? <laughs> Percep er, perception and awareness, I think. Awareness or empathy? No, no, empathy no perception is and empathy. Stuff. That's what it was. I knew perception it was empathy. empathy. I just couldn't remember okay, what the other so one was. Seven. You're looking for the emotionality of the situation. Nope. Bad eyes. What'd you get? Ooh. A botch. You got a botch. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. Uh, do you happen to have fortitude? I do. You do. I have two dots of fortitude. Oh, that's right. You don't get to use your uh, physical your physical disciplines. Okay. So you're watching as a crow is uh, wanting to watch. Uh, you know how their eyes, or ravens, I should say, kind of you know, zip back around and and, and and monitor the situation. So you kind of hunker down step you know step into the power line that you're on uh and in a flash of smoke <laughs> and feathers you are violently kicked out of the raven's body <coughs> poor raven okay <laughs> uh, um, <Never> more. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes okay and you now also need to roll a Wits and empathy check, difficulty eight. Wits, empathy. Okay. Well, I'm on a seventh tonight. Please, no more botches. I'm glad it's someone else. Oh my God. Time. I botched again. <laughs> Ooh. Good wow. Grief. All right. Yeah. Seven is not my number tonight, guys. So, it's not lucky. Obviously, um, I have to explain this to you out of character. Um, <laughs> this is going to affect you for the rest of the evening. Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what happened is when something something like knocks you out of the body, like in an yeah. excited fashion, like, you know, exploding bird, um, you have to try and roll to retain your own mind. Uh, failure to do so. Uh, obviously, part of this is, is not going to, you know, go on all night. Failure to do so means your mind returns to you, but you still think in purely animalistic terms, meaning yeah. you're going to be acting like a raven for the rest of the night. Oh, Lord. A botch, however, <laughs> oh, no. returns the character to your own body. Obviously, you're going to be thinking in animalistic terms, and you immediately enter a frenzy. Oh, boy. So okay. now, you jump so, back and freak. I would be a... Um... Kyrene. Yes, you would. Exactly. So you, you've now Her become... Plans. A uh, well, I'm in a room. Not... not. I would have been in a separate room, but... Oh, yeah. So you freak out. Right! You start... Uh, you, you frenzy. You are... You're squawking and flapping your arms around uh, violently uh, and just thrashing everything around. Like, you are just self-destructing in the most avian way in your room uh and uh you know the door comes open kyrene's like what the hell and of course <laughs> you lash out to attack her oh no uh so i think i need to move out of kyrene's <laughs> <laughs> i think it's time to move because this is twice i've done this to her <laughs> uh okay one second, so manipulation. Um, what is? Oh, difficulty seven. Either case. Okay, never mind. Oh boy, are you lucky? 
I don't know. Am I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she ended up getting. Where is that at? Is it... No, it's not. Okay. So you as you beak. freak out and you're like, you don't exactly, because again, you're thinking like an avian. So you're not attempting to grab her with your hands. You're trying to bite, like come in and, ah, 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 and you're, you're flailing your hands around. <laughs> She doesn't really take a moment to figure out what is happening, just that you're lunging at her angrily. And so she uh, she yells at you uh, using Quell the Beast, and she yeah. says, sit your ass down! And you just, you immediately drop out of your frenzy. You, you do the raven thing, like you just kind of tuck your head into your arm and, and sit, and, and like sit perched <coughs> on your, on your bed. That's that's about right. All right. <laughs> Nothing else I can do. So. Oh my. And you are, are and so dogs? you are like cowed in fear of her. Thankfully, that part is only going to extend to Kyrene probably for the rest of the night. Um, to everybody else, you should be okay. And she's like looking at you, and she says, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> And I can't really respond to her, right? Yeah. The The problem is you're going to act like a bird. So you can still respond. You are still you, but all of your mannerisms look and act like a raven. Okay. Um, I, I was spying on the occult bookstore in a raven form and got shocked by the pole. She speaks in broken sort of words. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a, give me a wits, uh, give me a wits and alertness check, difficulty six. Okay, wits and alertness, okay. <sighs> Two. Two, okay. Um, in your cluttered mess, you have found a shiny. <laughs> give me, give me a willpower. It. Give me a willpower check. Difficulty eight. Willpower. Oh. Okay. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and none of us are there to see it. <laughs> Seven. Oh, you got seven successes on a difficulty eight? Yes. Wow. Okay. Good Go job. Look. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, holy crap. Uh, look at the, you whoa, can that's with a one. And you can, you can resist it. You don't have to go get the shiny, but it is, it's clearly calling your attention. You want to pick it up and put it on your bed. I, I do one of those motions of like reaching for it and then pulling back, reaching for it like keep several in mind, times. Keep in mind that that would be with your mouth. <laughs> oh, okay. So she, her head is sort of like doing that number then. <laughs> yep. And so she's like, okay. Um, well, shiny. Thank you. Oh, God. So you jumped into the body of a raven, didn't you? She nods. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Her eyes are darting towards the shiny and between her and the shiny. Right. <laughs> and she's like okay well thank you for wrecking your room and not the house this time, time why don't out. you go play with your friends for a while while I work on getting this cleaned up I don't want to go out there like this <laughs> <laughs> she says it's called punishment <laughs> yeah she says no I'm, I'm not giving you a choice I don't want you to wreck anything else. <sighs> Grab and besides, the, shiny the and last run. thing I need is for your sire to come looking at this house and seeing you act this way. I'm going to go home. <laughs> and she promptly, like, tries to pick up her stuff, whatever she has, and... Uh, I don't know if she can drive in this state. Um, otherwise, she'll walk. That's that's a great question. I guess we'll have to find out. 
Yep. So yeah. What do okay. I need to roll? <laughs> so well, I mean, you climb, you climb into your yeah. car again. Give me a, uh, a wits and alertness, or a, yeah, wits and alertness check. Difficulty six. Okay. So as you are driving home, obviously your eyesight zipping back and forth, looking at things that, you know, that you're passing by uh, and coming, you know, back around the uh, coming back around from where Kyrene lives uh, over towards your old place. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, in the neighborhood, you end up seeing uh, an, an older couple kind of walking together, enjoying the uh, the night sky, and you can see her earrings. Oh, oh God. God. Give me a willpower check. <laughs> Difficulty eight. Come on, boss. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh dear. All right. So, do we need to reset the the dice bot? <laughs> so um, I wasted it all. <laughs> or exercise it. Let, let me see. So basically, what you thankfully you're not going super fast, but you unfasten I your seat. To... You unfasten your seatbelt. You <laughs> throw open the door and just jump right out, and, and just as you're starting to pass them, uh, and you instinctively go up. Uh, it. And mug them with your mouth and grab one of the earrings. Oh my god. <laughs> I have celerity too. Uh, did, so would I be you, able to use that? Are you wanting <laughs> to, to use car, that? To get back to the car in time so it doesn't crash? <laughs> it's like, did you get the license you know? plate of whatever that was? <laughs> like I, a hit and run, literally? Like <laughs> I will get the, Wow. I'll give you a shot. Um, that's going to be difficult. So we'll put that also at a difficulty eight. But that's going to be dex, okay. uh, dex and athletics. Add your celerity, uh, and since you're uh, um, using the celerity, or no, sorry, you're using celerity, so you don't get to add that to your die roll. But you need to spend a blood point because it's giving you the added speed. That's fine. Okay, so I'm rolling uh, dex, and, dex athletics. and athletics. So that's seven. All right. And you thought we would have nothing to do today. I didn't oh want a God. masquerade breach on my ship. Oh my <laughs> God! I cannot believe this. I did not want a masquerade breach on my ship. I don't oh want a masquerade God. breach on my ship. I'm like... so glad this is happening to somebody else besides my character. Well, yeah. So, um, <laughs> how many points in celerity do you have, Rachel? Two. Okay, so that's not like a masquerade breach. Um, because you're not blurring. You're just running abnormally fast. So you've got that. So you go, like, you've got the jewelry in your mouth. And they're like, like, they can't believe that they got mugged because somebody came up and, like, bit down on her ear and yanked off. And, and it wasn't like you used your lips. So it wasn't like you just, like, ripped it off with, like, fangs. Because, again, ravens don't have fangs. They're not going to equate that. They're like, bah -bah, you know. Much like picking seeds out, you just like wham, bam, like with deft skill, and then you just you, and then of course you need to go put it at your nest, and you go bolting off back towards the car, throw yourself at it, you end up like hitting the back hood, rolling straight off to the other side, and taking a point of bashing as you hit the ground, as your car ends up like rolling into a tree at like ten miles per hour. Oh, okay. So it's not terrible, but it's noticeable. And so now these two people are like, what the hell? They're, like, they, they're trying to process like what exactly was going on and how they could even explain this to the police because it's just so completely absurd. And that's, I'm going to use that to my advantage. <laughs> um, do I have any sort of sensibilities at this point um, yeah. in terms of basically getting back in the car and 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's just you realize the car came to a stop. You tried to run and get into the car, but that obviously failed. You just know you need to take the shiny back to your nest. Yep, going home. <laughs> just keep on going. Okay, so you quickly <laughs> throw it into gear real fast. And brrrr, say it's a prank yeah <laughs> so to be explained so uh <laughs> trudy uh you are mostly recovered at this point you've very already very hungry though you, yes but you've already kind of begun your day you started off with some breakfast so you're up you know a blood point from taking that uh could i could i have two because then that would give me three that would give you three for what um, I, cause I have efficient digestion. Oh, right. Uh, I'll tell you what, odd or even. Even. Okay. Cause there's a possibility you won't have it. You've been kind of sucking down your supplies here uh, lately. You said even, right? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Woohoo. And so as you're finishing up your breakfast, um, you hear, uh, uh you end up hearing, um, over the, uh, intercom. Um, from Gwen. Uh, ma'am? I really think you should come and look oh, at Lord. this. Did you find something? I think so. She'll go into the computer room. Okay. So she, so she's in there, and as you have instructed Gwen and it has been this way for some time you know she's in traffic cams and whatnot and she's looking at this and she says uh and kind of replays you know the video feed a second you kind of see like an aerial view from one traffic cam of what just took place with Damaris and she says um I want to classify it as a mugging I think can we can we tell that it's her? Oh yes, like like she. Be, unfortunately, because of the way she's acting, like when she runs up and she, I mean, she ran up and said and bit down, and so she's got this, she's got this, you know, something in her mouth. Like you can tell the way her mouth is formed, it, it's pursed like something's there, like in her lips, and then but she, it's not, but it's not bloody. Yeah, it's not, no, it's not bloody or anything. And and she's running okay. pretty fast. Like, she's running at a brisk step, flapping her arms. <clears throat> um, I'm going to call her. <laughs> okay. Oh I'm going to call her on the phone. So, just as Damaris, you come walking into your, your house at this point, your phone Should starts going You're going to walk like a raven, too? Yep. Uh, a, a little bit, yeah. I mean, but once you finally get your, um, once you finally get your jewelry and you just you kind of spit it out onto the bed, that you're, I mean, you're good. You're going to want to pr uh, perch on something, though. I don't know what I would perch on. Maybe the back of a chair or something or the couch. Probably. You have like a... A headboard or footboard. You're gonna you're gonna pull a prophecy like and just kind of yeah. perch up. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if she calls me, I don't know. I, I'll I'll try to answer it. Yeah, I mean you can you can still answer. You you don't you haven't lost all your faculties. It's just your instincts have kind of been diverted to a raven at this point. <laughs> she answers the phone and squawks. What? <laughs> Uh, Damaris, sweetie, um, how are you? <laughs> How's your night going? I don't know how to respond to that. Um, <laughs> could be better. Never you, more, uh, never more. Bit, have, have you been, uh, out on the town? Tonight, uh, out. Oh, somebody's volume is too feedback. high. Yeah. I mm -hmm. failed at trying to.
do something. <laughs> and now I'm paying the price. Are you feeling okay? <laughs> no, I'm feeling a bit peckish. Um, <clears throat> my security person uh, <laughs> caught some interesting video on a traffic camera. Um, oh boy. it was, was shiny. It, was wait, what? <laughs> Her earring, it was shiny. And that's why you tried to feed on her? Feed? No. Not... No, I was just wanting the earring. Uh, I wasn't hungry. Uh. At least not yet. Um, maybe you want to stay in tonight. <laughs> Kyrene said the know. same thing. <laughs> After I accidentally on purpose attacked her um is, is there anything that you need i don't know how would i think about that in sort of a bird instinct type of deal like i would bird seed. um no she even though she's i don't know she wouldn't have bird seed no because that, that that instinct would be to feed at that point yeah where are you at for blood yeah i'm not i'm I've only I'm only down one, so I only have one ghoul. Um, so I'm pretty much full, with the exception of one. So I'm at fourteen. Well, you should be at thirteen because you spent blood for Slary. Oh right, thirteen. Sorry, so but 13. still, you're, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. I I think I just need to protect the shiny that I found. So yeah, I'll stay in. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um. Um, I don't, I don't know if the police have noticed anything, but, uh, it's, it's possible that they might come around. Oh boy. Can, can you just tell them it was like a prank or something? Tell who? Uh, whoever comes around. Um, to, uh, well, um. I'll see what I can do. I mean, it's not like I, I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> All I did was steal a stupid earring. Um, and while she's still on the phone, she'll she'll turn to Gwen and she'll say, is there any way that we can play this off as a prank? Uh, and right then you hear, Demer you hear Damaris squawk, earring! <laughs> just instinctively, just you know, repeating what she said. You know, one of those one of those weird kid fads. Uh, let me get with um, Mr. Cronin and I'll, I'll see if there's something we can cook up quickly. Uh, we'll say drugs were involved. That's that's probably a safe uh, explanation. Mm -hmm. Did you did you want uh, um Miss uh, Miss Dawood to go and condition the uh, individuals who were attacked, ma'am. That would be lovely. Okay, um, then I will get with Mr. Cronin then, and we'll add that, I guess, to the plate, the 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 cooking up of the cover up. Um, I'll fudge the cameras a little bit so they're they're not quite as clear. So you can't identify her? Right, like some static or some noise or something that interferes with uh, uh, her identity. So she, can, so they could probably see what happened, but not make out who did it. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Do I hear this going on, this exchange? or? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, because Trudy probably has you on speaker. Okay. Thanks, Trudy. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> I need to work on that discipline. You just let us know if you're feeling. 
I, I'm feeling if, if you pretty need chill something. right now. Uh, if you need what? something. Yeah, Ky Kyrene worked a little bit of magic. She wasn't happy. Squawk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe maybe turn in early tonight. Um. So, uh, Gwen says, "Ma'am, I know you usually have like a a meeting with other folks. Maybe you guys should just have that at at her place or something." No. <laughs> are Are you sure? No. If If something should come up, um. The last thing I need is for people to see me like this. I have a reputation to uphold. Uh huh. Honey, that it went out the door the moment you took the earring. Well, nobody else knows about it yet, except Trudy. <laughs> And I trust her. <laughs> All right. Uh, get some rest, hon. I will. Let, I, I'm still somewhat functional if you guys need anything, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go nest on this shiny here. I'll be back later. Okay. You you do that. And she'll hang up and just look at Gwen Here's like walk. shiny before she hangs up. <laughs> She's just going to look at Gwen like Okay. <laughs> and she's like, uh, forgive my ignorance, but is Raven a clan? <laughs> you know what? It's probably some weird thaumaturgy thing. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, like I said, I don't know much about like your life and in that sense. So uh, I'm just blissfully ignorant and happy to stay that way. Me too. Did you see Davy Jones' comments? <laughs> yep. Where all these botches coming from? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting them out of the way for you guys. You can do the important work. Me and Dale have been plagued by those for like the last three game sessions. Because I've been out. They had to go somewhere. <laughs> they did not need to go to us because it was not a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, Trudy, you do know that there are probably some matters that you're that uh, should probably be discussed, uh, in, you know, for the city. Do I? Um, I love those blank player stairs, <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> Nothing comes to mind. I've had other things going on. Okie doke. Uh, that Steve, just means they're going to bite me. <laughs> Steven? Uh, yes? Was there uh, anything that you felt the city needed to be made aware of or issues that uh, should probably be taken care of since you're the only other individual uh, with hmm. with the appropriate rank? And since... To the best of my knowledge... We had successfully got the Nosferatu to agree to f try and find a path, which was going to be handled by Damaris. So that, I believe, is being taken care of. The other issue had to do with, um, and which was going to, which was put off, was uh, our lovely um, necromancer, and that was put off till we had enough people to come up with an effective strategy. Um, after that, um, and who was the necromancer? Um, I'm sorry, the mage with um, the gang. Gotcha. So Roxy. The, Roxy. The sorcerer Roxy. with the gang. Roxy. Yep. Necromancer, sorcerer, almost the same Roxy, thing. Roxy, Roxy. Um, other than that, um, the issue with Seth and Ben was kind of taken care of, but with Ben not here, there's no real way to finish resolving that, so that gets postponed too. Um, let's see here. Uh, the business with Trudy was resolved. Nothing that's been brought to my plate that I'm aware of at this point. All the, all the issues that could be handled that he's aware of are basically tabled for a lack of personnel, etc. Okay. Um, he, he would try to just generally walk around the downtown area mm -hmm. 
just kind of because out of character, I don't know that Ben's tied up with or whatever, but having not heard from him, he'd be like, okay, someone needs to get out there and walk around and see if there's anything odd going around. And so basically he's just going to go out and stroll around the, the you know, the, the prime area where our kind hang out and see if there's anything unusual going around or that can be picked up. And since the ghouls are still basically under his control, he'd have the ghouls walk around with him. Okay. So, you know, just basically doing a loose patrol and seeing what was going on. Uh, why don't you give me a uh, give me a perception and alertness check? Um, okay. Difficulty seven. And then six. Let's see if I got it right. Four successes. Okay. So you and your people at this point are just kind of prowling around the city, keeping an eye out in general. Mm -hmm. And as you make your way uh, around downtown, you happen to pass Anzio's, mm -hmm. which is uh, quite busy. Uh, it's got, uh, as well as some of the other restaurants down the area, it's uh, people getting out, uh, getting, getting about, getting, you know, social at this time of year uh despite the cold um what you do see however it, um as you're walking by you can see that uh, someone in very um very wealthy clothing is stepping out uh far more than your usual uh denizen of a nice restaurant so, like, you can tell just by looking at it, these are, like, designer clothes, um, probably tailored tailored fit as well, <clears throat> and is, uh, you know, coming into the restaurant uh, with a retainer of, like, four people. So, okay. could, could be a celeb. I mean, who knows, but it's not like celebrities give off that kind of vibe <laughs> unless they're trying to be seen for some reason. Okay. I'm familiar with um, the front door people. I've been there many times. They know me. So I'm going to walk up and ask him if he can tell me who that is. Okay. Uh, why don't you give me a, uh, give me a charisma and expression check. Expression. Charisma is for, I think expression is actually empty. Yes, it is. So I have four. Okay. Ten. Okay. Oh, so you had one success. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you said ten when I asked. Oh, you I'm, I'm sorry. I I'm meant like, to say wow, just a so you've got five in both, and okay. no, nope, not a bit. All right, so you've got a success. Not bad. Mm. Uh, so he he kind of mulls it over a second, and he says, "Uh." Don't know. I've never seen the guy here. Hmm. Did he give a name? Uh, he said uh, Castile de uh, Abraham. Oh, crap. Okay. Um, I would ask him, who's the manager tonight? Uh, our manager, uh, he says, uh, what is it, Hector? Yeah, it's, it's Hector. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Hector. Yeah, he says uh, our manager Hector is on duty. Okay, would you let Hector know that that's a prince? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, we have royalty I think, in the restaurant? I don't think Hector knows about that stuff. No, he's oh. talking like to the doorman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also, I don't know. Yes, that's, that that's, that. that's, some, that's royalty from out of town. Uh, wow. Okay, I didn't know that was really a thing outside of the royal family and England. Okay. Um, I'll let him know. And then I'll step outside for a minute. And out of character, I don't know who's not available, but I'm going to go. I'm just going to put it out into the chat. I'm like, whoever's here who can do power influence, Castile just walked into Anzio's with an entourage of four. 
I doubt he wants to be greeted by one of the Sedites of the city at this point without someone else being present. What a time for upper management to be out of town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Damaris is out of commission, so. so <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. Pre there's no way I'd let you get within a yeah, city block. Nah. I wouldn't let me get into this. Yeah, no, I understand. And so, Damaris, by the time you get that message, um, you have got uh, several coins on your bed. Uh, you have um, a shot glass. You of course got your got the earring. Um, you've got some like uh, hair cuffs that were. Yeah, she's probably emptied her jewelry box onto oh, yeah. the bed. Like she just took it out and just went <laughs> dumped it on there. <laughs> Dang it! I got to reorganize this later. <sighs> yep. I close that note. Castile is Trish's sire. sire yes, and the prince of. Yes. Seattle. Portland. Oh, that Seattle. part I remembered. <laughs> Which one? Portland or Seattle? Seattle. Okay. Um, where's the book? Huh? Who do That's I a... get a response, Trudy? Oh, I'm Trudy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Welcome does Trudy yourself? <laughs> I mean, if you want to play Sophie, um <laughs> probably help. Trudy, um, Trudy would say, uh, isn't that a prince? Did, did anyone hear from the Baron that he was coming? I can't speak for that because I have communicated with the Baron in a, probably a week or two. There hasn't been real necessity for it, but, um, in answer to your question, I was informed there was a strong possibility he would arrive. Well, this is lovely. I suppose we ought to go meet him. Well, as I said before, I doubt a single Sedite is what he's expecting. Uh, I'm available. Who else would like to join me? <laughs> well, I could compose a list of those who don't and can't meet him. <laughs> I think it'd be up to Trudy to tell them that she can't come. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah, Trudy would say, uh, I am I think Damaris is under the weather today. You know, peckish. She has the bird flu. <laughs> she has the bird flu. Um... I guess she, so she would probably just say I'm on my way whoever would like to join me and then she'll go tell her people that uh, she needs to get there and um, since you have uh, Zyla and um, Gwen working on Sandria the the Cover up. Oh, Zilla. Zyla. That's okay. how you pronounce it. <laughs> if you say so. Yes. Okay. So she just have um, <laughs> Seth or Zandria. Okay. Revis will then um, step inside the doorway and just watch the which you know the proceedings taking place. Okay. This is at Anzio's. Yep. It is. So you know, Anzio's is not. He probably the place doesn't anymore. care. Okay. Well, Trudy will head down there. Okay. Revis is there. Is anybody else going? <laughs> no. Okay. I really want to be there because it's her place, but I can't. So like after. This. I'm told that Trudy's on her way. I will then walk over to wherever Hector would be and say, Hector, there's going to be a party of two joining that table where Castile is located at. Please let him know that two members of the community uh, will be arriving shortly. And um, I'll wait for Trudy to show up at that point. 
And he says, uh, okay, um, will do. Uh, but if this is what I think it is, uh, shouldn't I be directing everyone to a private room upstairs? That would probably be desirable, but I'm not sure the gentleman will be amenable. You can try. And if he objects, just let it pass. We'll deal with it. Uh, okay, will do. Uh, and then you and uh, Damaris, you end up getting a call. Do I see who it is? Yeah, it's Hector. Oh boy. Um, all right. Can I like try to gather my senses? For just uh, well, I will. I'll gather my senses. Try to talk to him. Uh, all right. Yes, Hector. Okay. Uh, he says, uh, ma'am, there is a, uh, a prince here at the restaurant. I'm oh. going to see what I can do about getting him to the upstairs room. Uh, your friend Revis is here um, and uh, has told me, I guess, two people are going to be showing up in addition. I, I, I'm, I need guidance. I, I don't know what else to do here. Okay. You're okay. usually the one that takes care of this. Yes, I know. And I appreciate you telling me but this is can't be worse timing when he says prince i i feel like i may already know because based on our previous you know situations mm -hmm. um so lee take them to the upstairs room uh revis will direct in my stead for the night um but yes, uh, for privacy, direct them upstairs. The, the prince will understand. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, have them set up. Uh, well, there's no blood. Oh, shoot, there's no blood there. Um, nope. No, I can't offer them refreshments because this place is off limits. Um, okay, yeah. So just um, <laughs> tell Revis to leave the... Uh, the that he's in charge of this particular meeting. I am indisposed at the moment. And um, yeah, listen to what he says for now. Okay, okay, we will do. Um, I'm going to call Revis afterwards. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to be busy because as soon as I, uh, I realized where we were at, I would have gotten on the phone with Danny. Okay. And asked Danny um, if there were specific blood requirements. Would he be able to try and meet that if I had to call something in? Uh, okay, so I mean, he he picks up and he's like, uh, I guess it depends on what kind of specific blood requirements. I, I mean, if it's just like pretty ladies, well, that's a little bit more subjective and probably easier to obtain. If it's like i don't know clog dancing you know professional clog dancers I, I mean this is oregon there ain't that many yeah i know danny but um in case you missed it we have a prince visiting anzios right now and anzios has no blood no, oh so. oh i didn't know you all ripped that stuff on out of there i, I thought it was just still good eats no, what happened is um, Anzios got tagged as part of the breach, and the agreement was they would not serve for a year. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I'm. Uh, I mean, I guess it's I, not like I need it, but I, I mean, I guess that's a that's a good thing, of course. Uh, well, all right. Well, um, um well, I'll get uh, I'll get my my Sunday best on and and uh, get to hunting. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate it. <clears throat> and then I'll wait for Trudy to show up. Okay. With, with the infinite power of resources. Uh, and Trudy uh, has brought Xandria? Or yeah. She, okay. I mean, she's not picky. Whoever's available. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Damaris will call Revis. Okay. I, I pick um, it up. At first thing you'll hear is a squawk. Um, I can't make it tonight. Hector called me. I told him to follow your directions. Leave them upstairs, please, for privacy. He will understand. Brevis just goes, of course. 
Thank you. And then she'll hang up. And as she hangs up, he looks at the phone and goes, well, now, that sounds like a spell that didn't go well. (laughs) (laughs) And then Madam Trudy arrives. Yes. So uh, a nice sedan uh, pulls to a stop. A well-dressed businesswoman uh, with her hair pulled back into a simple ponytail steps out, holds the door uh, for Trudy, who is likely in one of uh, one of her best power suits for for business, looking very much the part of a uh, probably still a Southern oil baron uh, of some kind. So it's got a little bit of South flair to it, uh, but all, uh, you know, all business, no play. Chanel suits and cowboy boots. Yep. Revis would simply hold out his arm and goes, shall we go? She will take his arm. Okay. We will enter and head upstairs. So uh, as you guys were waiting, uh, Hector did manage to divert the group uh, upstairs uh, to await in a private room. Uh, And as you are... Uh, as you are um, waiting to get in, obviously the, the the restaurant's bouncer is downstairs. But when you go upstairs, uh, two of the prince's men are actually waiting by the door at this point. Can I do an aura perception? Yeah, go ahead. What did we decide? That's um, perception and perception awareness. and empathy. 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 Difficulty eight. seven. Oh, eight. Yeah, that's right. Eight. One success. Okay. Uh, you can tell right now that the men that are in front of the door mean business. Uh, can I? What I mostly was wanting to know is: Are they human or are they vampire? Uh, they do not possess a pale aura. Okay. Okay. Um, do they let us in, or are they uh, do not they stop before us at the not door? before patting you down? Oh, that's fine. Uh, and uh, if you are not bringing in any particular weapons, uh, then they they let you in. Brevis uh, yeah, wasn't um, carrying anything when he started his patrol. He generally, uh, Zandri at this point is waiting right outside on the other side of the wall. Uh, on the to, outside. Yes, to watch them, because she is yeah. not relinquishing her weapon. I was going to say, I was going <laughs> to say, Trudy has people for that. Yes. <laughs> so that's that's fine. She'll just give her a nod. Reavers would have loved his two downstairs with the lower level. Okay. Um, so Trudy will... Um, okay, wait. So he has two men inside? Yes, he does. Can I do another aura perception on the people inside? You sure can. Still difficulty eight? Yes, it's always going to be difficulty eight. Two successes. Nice. Uh, So, um, you end up seeing one disembodied shape (laughs) floating around, just kind of watching. Uh, The uh, obviously the other two were uh, um, one is a vampire, uh, the other is not. Both of them are still looking kind of uh, concerned uh, and stern. Uh, The two that are in here, uh, one vampire, obviously, and one not. Uh, are clearly keeping their heads on the swivel and you know looking around and staring at you two probably trying to gauge something similar uh, and the uh, uh, the man actually sitting at the head of the table as he has positioned himself uh, uh, he stands up and smooths down his uh, his very well designed suit uh, and in fact, uh, if Sophie were here, she would be making a check. 
Well, he is a Toreador prince, isn't, isn't he? Precisely. So this is a, a very high crafts, well-designed suit. And in fact, when you look at it, it's, it's in like uh, um, uh, fields of crimson and, and there's like gold that kind of comes down. And if you look Ooh. closely, that may actually be gold thread. Very nice. So like this, this suit literally cost quite a bit. <clears throat> uh, his his hair is uh, pull, uh, um, his black hair is pulled back, uh, also tied into a ponytail, very well kept, uh, no facial uh, stubble whatsoever, like perfectly manicured uh, and groomed. <clears throat> and he uh, you know he looks to the two of you and he says, "Hmm, I was expecting the Baron." I beg your pardon, uh, Prince Castile. Uh, she seems indisposed tonight. Um, did you tell her you were coming? We do not use electronic devices, and I do not have any method of actually communicating with her directly. So this was my attempt to make that note. I see the the direct way. Um, she'll offer her hand to shake. Okay. Uh, and and she'll say, um, "I'm Trudy Maxwell Villains." I am well aware of who you are. <laughs> Riri just looks down and goes, "Uh." I regret to inform you, sir, that we have uh, we do not serve refreshments at this establishment at the current time. Uh, can we order something in for you? You served refreshments here. Uh, we oh, did. Oh yes, that's right. That was the anarch selling point, I believe, of the city. Your integration with humanity. Was it? I don't like him. Uh, and he says, uh, but if you were offering, yes, I would not mind a glass of uh, something preferable if you have it. Uh, is there any specific vintage we can procure for you? I, yes, let me have something that you would drink. Ooh. Tricky. Um, Trudy will poke her head out the door um, and uh, ask Xandria to call the Dragonflugel and get um, refreshments uh, from her personal store. And she says, uh, she, uh, she can just call it in. She doesn't have to. Uh, go. Of course, ma'am. I'll, I'll do that right away. Thank you. It's my little puppy. Yep. <laughs> we have a new foster coming into the house today, and he's not. Um... Yeah. Hey, enough. A puppy or a human? <laughs> um, a human. Gotcha. 13 year old. Oh, yes. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, young ladies and me, I generally leave that to the other side till they're over the age of 18. <laughs> Boys, I'm more than had adequate with, but young girls, oh, no, pass. Anyhow. Um, so she will she will come back in and, and say uh, the order has been placed. Um, may we entertain you for the evening in the absence of the Baron? The, how would you entertain me? Um, Metaphorically, sir. Oh, um, I am here obviously for a few days, so why not? Uh, is it, it's Seattle, is it not? Yes, it is. It is Seattle. And how is how is business? 
business is brisk. Thank you for asking. As a port city, we tend to see our fair share of kindred coming in and out on a regular basis. The Sabbat, uh, they are obviously no end uh, of a headache. Um, as I am, as I overhear that they have been issues here as well. Although I, I am curious, since you have raised that point, I hear that they were recently bought off. How exactly did that work? Revis would kind of look over at Trudy and Sorry, I missed who he is referring to because I was writing notes. He didn't refer to anybody. <laughs> that who who was bought off? The, the Sabbat. Shabbat. The Sabbat? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure I know what you're referring to, sir. Revis would interject at that point and go, there was a problem with a member of the Black Hand. He was successfully dealt with, with intermediaries involved. Ah, uh, yes. I like the vagueness. <laughs> Doesn't need to know details. <laughs> this is interesting. The, uh, Black Hand, from what I understand, are more an elite faction, so I'm always interested to hear that, uh, always interested to find out when they are dealt with in such more mundane fashions, and checking the veracity of the story, of course. Ooh, hoo -hoo. okay. Uh, Persephone. Uh, mm. You feel the sudden urge to go <laughs> to go directly. Uh, oh no! <laughs> go directly to Angios. Oh, I knew oh, that was no. going to happen. Oh no! 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 He can. I'm in Eugene. Uh, then you need to. Okay, well, one. You guys needed to let me know, out of character, that that was going to be happening because you understand, especially with Dale not being here. There's literally yeah, nothing. Yeah, I, I to wasn't do. too sure what how so, we were going to. So FYI, that did not happen yet. This okay. Is, whatever you guys did is happening Planet. afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to make it interesting to go forward. Otherwise, bad. otherwise, unfortunately, uh, uh, with that role, you would be. I would be derailing your whole scene behind the scenes. Okay. Um, since she's felt this pull before thanks to Ben she's going to be quite alarmed um, and I think the person that she will first reach out to would be Damaris sure. as she's <laughs> preparing to leave uh, keep in mind uh, your desire to leave the house uh, is rush level you you don't you don't care about how you look, only that you are clothed and you need to get to uh, Anzios as quickly as possible, and you're willing to do anything to get there. That sounds like a lot of tens. Is um. Don't is, a lot of successes. <laughs> is is Jesse available? Uh, he is. Okay. She's going to um come up from. Down below, she's going to look for, well, Jesse, I guess, would be the first one she sees. Uh, Jesse, I need you to drive me somewhere. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, where are we going? Uh, I have this urge to go Italian. Um, Anzio's, please. And she's calling Damaris while they're doing this. Yeah, keep in mind you're walking and talking towards the door. You're not mm -hmm. really stopping to talk to him. So, yep. so <clears throat> he's, oh, okay. He's uh. multitasking. So calls Damaris. 
So, Damaris, you get a call. Oh, boy. Can't they just leave me in peace? Um, she opens her phone, throws it on speakerphone, and then just tosses it on the bed. What? Hey, um, I don't know what's going on, but I've got this sudden urge to head to Anzio's. Oh. Um, you should be warned that uh, Prince Castile is there. Ah, son of a... And I am indisposed. I cannot get there tonight. <sighs> Neither can Ben. Ben's well, busy on a case. Rivas and, and I think Trudy are there. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. Rivas Look, is there. Hold, I, I, I'm telling you, squawk. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. <laughs> um, Got to give you points you for playing that. Yourself. You better behave yourself. If you come, I am feeling again, quite, she is... quite alarmed at the moment. You could hear the door, the car yeah. door close. Don't mess up Anzios. Don't do this. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Just don't. Oh, I mean, God, why didn't we leave earlier? Your life may be at risk and your identity is blown, but please don't mess up the restaurant. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and you then, can't be there. Why can't you be there? She just squawks, shiny. I got to go. <laughs> she hangs up. She gives Jesse a panicked look. I, at this point, he's just, you know, climbing into the car and he's like, uh, uh, I, I mean, we, we gotta go because you're instinctively climbing into the car. Uh huh. And he's uh, like, we, uh, "We gotta go. We, we gotta go. We gotta go." Uh, okay. Damn, I hate this stuff. Freaking vampires. <laughs> uh, question, Jerome. Yes. The disembodied figure in the room. Mm -hmm. Does it look like a wraith, or does it look like somebody in uh? That, that that is hidden uh great question um ba since you're getting a little bit more adjusted to this based on their movements you'd probably guess wraith okay that's what i was hoping uh and in fact uh you would actually hear inside your head trudy uh uh hey toots it's it, it's just me uh just hanging out uh, uh you know around the peripheral uh boss man didn't want you going alone <laughs> she'll she'll smile and nod in his general direction. Um, so she'll she'll just engage in small talk about um, just asking asking questions about Seattle, like um, professional questions, mostly like trying to stay uh, professional, but. Um, yeah. If okay. She can. Well, I guess we'll we'll wait and see. Sure. She's playing the long game. Yep. She'll uh, keep it. She'll keep it above board. Yep. So for each question you ask, uh, you ask. Uh, obviously, he's asking another one in return. Uh, so, uh, what you find out, uh, what he provides, anyways, about Seattle is that um, it's a very well defended and populated city. Um, <clears throat> that uh, despite uh, any rumors to the contrary, um, there are no uh, actual problems with the Sabbat, uh, despite being as close to Vancouver as they are. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the main problem that uh, neonates of the city seem to have uh, is uh, they seem to have this predilection for going out into the wilderness or the outskirts of towns and so an increase of lupine issues uh, <laughs> have arisen. Uh, he says, but as far as the city is concerned, they have a very tight schedule in all of their salons and Elysia. Uh, so it is uh, very efficiently run. Uh, what he is curious about, since you were the one asking the questions, is he's wanting to know uh, about your marriage, uh, the the <laughs> arrangement therein, uh, and in some cases a little personal, uh, but more along the lines of like morbid curiosity, like the decor, 
you know, setting and whatnot, like the Toreador popping out in him just because. Yes, because it's very personal to ask somebody how their wedding was decorated. I mean, it could be. You are Ventru. If you think, if you, if you think about it, I mean, he's coming from high society. Like he wants many, like many Ventru and, and Toreador would be. So to not have certain things like at a wedding or a big event or whatnot could be quite yeah. gauche. Well, um, so the way that she, I mean, she's going to uh, chat about all of that in a in a friendly way, friendly okay. and professional. But she's going to uh, lean on references to the important people that were there. Oh. Okay. Specifically, um, uh, like uh, Lucinde was there, right? And she was, I think, and um, Isabel, Isabel, mm-hmm. and um, just the like the big wigs, right? Basically, like the people that were in charge of the thing, and um, that they were, um, the planning was done by them, kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, why don't you give me, uh, since you're you're being honest about it, but you're being specific, uh, why don't you give me a charisma and expressions check? For clarification, this is the conversation between her and Castile. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, we're basically we're making on small arrival, talk. It's just don't know side about. idle chatter. I mean, Trudy thinks they're waiting on the arrival of the drinks. Yeah. And we're just whatever. Waiting for the hammer to drop. Is, yeah, I figure once the drinks arrive, then he'll finally tell us why he's here. Oh, I, know. Um, I have a good idea why he's here. I was vocal about it a long time ago. <laughs> um, what am I rolling again? Charisma and what? Charisma and expression. Difficulty six. Five. Nice. Okay. So he does seem mildly impressed. Not so much with the the name drops, but just the assembly uh, of everything that that you know that was put together, and he's kind of nods. And, and she'll say, she'll say, "Are you are you considering such an alliance yourself?" A marriage. Oh, heavens, no. <laughs> I will leave that up to the two individuals uh, uh, in the Crimson Wedding, and I, that's quite enough for me, thank you. I understand. It is a, a bit of a novelty. And, uh, you know, he... You know, he looks over uh, at Revis, who, of course, has, you know, been... Pretty, pretty quiet for, for most of the affair. Uh, and he looks to Trudy and he says, I do have to commend you. Your setite is quite in line. Normally, they're very manipulative. Well, he is a valuable member of the city. So he kind of raises his eyebrow and just lets it go. <laughs> Hey, don't take the bait. And at, As, that, at that point, uh, Persephone comes like busting into the room real quick. Revis okay, is I, look at the ground I'm here. And his head and go, there we go. And all that urgency just, and she sees Castile. Could I scry on this scene? You sure could. <sighs> okay, I will. If I have enough. Uh, time away from the shiny nest to do that yep go right ahead. i'll bring it to her rather yeah. go ahead and make that roll yep. i i am here well you're just in time for drinks yes i think i could use one and he oh says God. nope that's appropriate i failed oh no <laughs> oh no 
<laughs> I'm so glad I'm not there. You don't I have got, any rerolls. I got two. Don't even worry about it. It's it's all part of the fun. I just she's like, you know what? This is more important. Right now. <laughs> I gotta got to give you this. credit. Wow. It would, it's pretty frustrating watching. It's even more frustrating when it how, happens to you. <laughs> how many is that so far? Like That's five? Like four or five failures on this whole night. So it just wasn't meant to be. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I don't think Davey happens. saging the dice roller has Yeah, helped. I know. <laughs> so, <It's> real. <laughs> Damaris, you get your water going. You're kind of distracted. You, you stir, 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 and start your... Uh, you know, start up the uh, since that was you know a failure. You stir, stir, stir. You you start your scry and, and start working because you've done this spell a number of times. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the scry comes through, the first thing you see, shiny. He has gold lining. You gotta go. <gasps> what you, really? Like I saw that through that. Yep. And I would know that it's gold lining, like because it's shiny. Remember, remember, ravens don't look at it as like a precious metal or a gem because they'll collect Coke cans. I mean, just <laughs> if it happens to be just, shiny, just for bottle tap. I'm going to derail for just a second. A friend of mine owns a car wash and he had to put a cage over the um, change receptor because it kept getting robbed and they found out it was ravens that yeah. were robbing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Because they realize that if shinies the, come out of that little yep. bull thing. They're they're okay. smart enough to recognize that. Oh, if, if there's yeah. a will, there's a way and they will oh, yeah. they will find that way. Okay, so, so knowing fun. what's waiting there, can I roll my willpower to stay? Mm. Sure, difficulty 8. I'll give you a shot. Please don't watch. <laughs> You're <gonna> botch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Or oh. Okay. Thank you. We'll keep in mind you don't have a specialty on willpower. Oh, that's right. It's still Sorry, three. It's still three. But yeah, Sorry. it's it's still three. Okay, I mean it's it's you're able it's to hard. keep you're able to keep yourself in place, but it's frustrating you at this point. I'm looking for more shiny things around my couch. Yeah, you're you are. If she steals the prince's coat with her mouth, this is. <laughs> I'm not gonna doing make. It. I will roll. Gonna make a lot of problems for as I need. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, that would have cost you willpower to do that. So for, to force <laughs> that roll. Oh, okay, that's fine. So just temporary willpower. Boop. Okay, and so uh, you are uh, so you were all present. Um, so uh, Zandra um, would then let you know. Uh, she would peek in and let you know that uh, refreshments are here. Um, since Zandra is not gonna step inside, then she'll she'll go get them herself. Okay. So did they? They patted her down and took maybe, all her weapons. Yes. Maybe she'll ask Revis if he could go get them. They would have quite the. Uh, Revis would simply look at you and go, "Sure." There would be quite the pile. Yes. And uh, Revis walks over to the door and opens the door, goes. Refreshments are allowed in. So she. Hand, she ends up handing you uh, like a container uh, <clears throat> and then a small box with uh, two glasses. Okay. Don't they still have a bar up here? We could just use their glasses. Yeah. They, they weren't certain. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Revis would put them where he's been instructed to and step back. Okay. Uh, and as Revis is in the process of you know handling this, uh, Castile looks to Persephone and he says, and you must be Persephone. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for making the time to come here this evening. Just <laughs> couldn't tear myself away. Well, you did come with such haste. I do appreciate that. And I wanted to let you know. <clears throat> You have actually caused me no end of headaches lately. 
Not intentionally. Really? No. Well, there is the matter of the deceased kindred that your name is tied to. There's also the matter of you teaching my child blood magics, which has thoroughly upset your clan. <clears throat> Clearly, parts of this are very intentional. Again, it wasn't intentional. Trish is important to me. <clears throat> And with the recent Sabbat attacks and her being tied to a Sabbat pack because of a former relationship, I was only trying to protect her. By intentionally gifting her things that you know your clan would not approve. She has no answer. Hence, my comment about your intention. You knew if that word got out, there would be a number of individuals upset. But you did it anyways. He kind of motions with his hands, you know, around. Because you ran arcs. And then he sees, of course, you're you're still kind of like standing there, and he says, "You can have a seat." I uh, actually feel better standing. Thank you. Uh, Trudy will pour for um, whoever is in the room. Reeves, of course, politely declines. Okay, and so he he motions when you go to pour him a, a glass. Uh, and he motions for you to uh, to have a seat, uh, and he takes the <clears throat> he takes the canister that you know the fluid is in and pours you a glass first. Uh, she will politely thank him. And if Seth's given one, she guzzles it. <laughs> okay. Town, town. She's <laughs> really trying hard not to, to fidget, so her hands are quite nervous. Hello, Vancouver by night, and hello, Game Tees. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, he doesn't pour you a glass. Uh, he At that point, he would return it back to Trudy. Um, and he says, I had uh, certainly hoped uh, to see my child. It looks like she is currently indisposed. So since I do not have her here, uh, I figured it would be a good idea uh, to discuss some of these issues that have arisen uh, thanks to your dear Persephone. Are you close with your child, sir? I am not, regretfully. She has been on the run for a number of years now. If I may be so bold, uh, what were the circumstances that led to that? I, be, I believe the story, as I have been told, is that she was scared away. Uh, perhaps by this Sabbat individual that you have mentioned. Unfortunately, she left in such a rush and with little detail, it was bereft of the actual story. Um, I will state, um, and surely as a venture, you can appreciate this, that it is rather taboo when a, another kindred in the accounting runs never mind the fact that it gets compounded here or there with being taught things that she probably should not have that are taboo to other clans 
she understood that she was under an accounting, though. Question mark. <laughs> Do you vocalize the question mark? <laughs> no. Question mark. <laughs> yes, she did. This is why she was um, kept so close to me for the, the initial period of her training. Revis would speak up at this point and go, do you know how she made or interacted with the Sabbat and what led to that? I am led to believe that there was some sort of romantic tryst involved. It is curious that uh, she should have such close contact while under your uh guidance and supervision i cannot watch her 24 7 nor can i stake her and keep her within my haven that would be rude and gauche and you know seth still wants to say something but she's, she's but she, she she left one night after analysia in a rather unapproved fashion, and by the time that I realized she had exited, and then this is where the story is coming into play. Revis would go, I confirm part of your story. Um, there was another kindred involved. He since has perished at the hands of a Sabbat pack. Well, there is that. <laughs> Look at all those fingers flying and trying to keep up. <laughs> so uh, he's, he says, so I suppose this is all we'll have here for the evening, uh, given whatever schedules your people tend to keep. I, I am curious, uh, Trudy, um, how exactly does Donna work out here? That is a rare and unique quality within the other Anarchs. I don't recall that being an official title, but more of a Giovanni thing. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, it is a rather unique position. Uh, Which no doubt as... stems from the wedding. Sorry, what? Which no doubt stems from the wedding, correct? Yes, yes. Um, seeing as there is a Dawn in town, uh, Donna is more like a consort position, and my responsibilities are to... Uh, they're purely family-based, um, not exactly political leaves me free to conduct myself as an anarch and also an adopted member of the local Giovanni. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. <clears throat> so, Persephone, I am curious, given your lack of commentary this evening so far. We have identified the fact that your actions were intentional, uh, perhaps devoid of wisdom, but they were intentional. Now, how do you plan on rectifying this? And, and I do hope it's in a peaceful manner. She's going to look at Revis and Trudy for a moment. <laughs> Do her eyes say, help me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, Trudy, or not Trudy, but um, Persephone, why don't you give me a self-control check, knowing that you are very stressed. Uh, we're going to say it is a difficulty eight. Oh, shit. 
be nice. Are you talking to the dice roller? Yes. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was a failed roll. My God. No. Oh, yeah. well, she didn't budge, but she didn't yeah. succeed either. Uh, so no oh frenzy. Gosh. No, no oh frenzy. Gosh. Nothing like that. All right. One second. Ah, dang it. I hate it when it does that. <laughs> I'm going to ban Persephone from her Enzio's. Okay, so. <laughs> hey, she didn't want to be there. So, Just saying. Trudy and Revis. Yep. She clearly has the look of concern on her face. It's very hard for her to hide it. I mean, at this point. Like, she, mm -hmm. she's looking lost. What you do notice, however, uh, is that her... Uh, <laughs> Uh, is that her uh, eyes become gold with large black irises? Damn it! Oh no! Oh no! 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 Oh no! Drew, you suck! <laughs> oh man! Revis is just gonna look at Persephone and go like, pause it now. Pause what? It's showing in your eyes, dear. He's, He's going to say that out loud? Yep. Okay. Is there, so, is there I, like I mean, a, a, at that is point, there like a shiny, oh, no. is there oh, like a no. Oh, no. Anything anywhere um, where he can look? And the prince is Torridor, which means he has auspects. Which so he, he can why read her saying it out loud? Oh, no. You've you got black veins, my dear. Been up the entire time. <laughs> so he so he looks to Persephone, and, you know, as oh, she's no. clearly panic stricken by that that comment and looking back and forth, she's lost control of the new power she's obtained and glancing back and forth. Uh, and and so he says, "Oh, so the Sedites are to blame." What? B b blame for, for 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 what? He says, uh, "I will deal with your baron about that. That would be uh, rather inappropriate for me to enter somebody else. I'm being honorific and uh, granting that Ashland is its own domain. I'm not going to come in here and proceed to step on your baron's toes. But uh, that was enlightening. Thank you for your." non-answer mm -hmm. you know she's actually going to go take that seat now on the okay. on the other side of the room for this that she can get from castillo and shelly rachel just gave you a reroll. oh thank you honey <laughs> <laughs> seth is gonna sit i think you need it more than me now <laughs> well you know what i have two re-rolls i totally forgot about them Oh, no. I hate it when I do that. <laughs> Anyhow. Grievous just shakes his head. It's like. And it's obvious. The disappointment just rolls off him. You would actually have two re-rolls at this point because you hadn't updated your character sheet. Uh, the last time you'd sent it to me because you had used one. So you're back up to two. Right I now. gave you all my character sheets. You have my. Yeah. No, my... no, 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 no. It's when, because uh, when I specifically went to update your character sheet, that game, you had used one of your rerolls, but you still had two showing on your sheet. So you should only have one on your sheet. Now it should be two. So you don't really have to edit it. Okay. So you're fine. I'm just making sure you don't have three listed down. Revis would speak at that point, and he, after listening to the prince speak, and he goes, I will make sure the Baroness knows of what's taken place. And you can hear the sadness in the tone. He says, uh, well, um, it was a delight meeting all of you for the first time. 
I do hope to speak with your baron soon, perhaps at the uh, a scheduled gathering. Um, I will ask, is this location no longer an Elysia? I was told that it, it, it was, at, at least at one point in time. It had been. Uh, we had hunters in the city, and this location was compromised. Uh, yes, compromised. Um, then would you please make your Baron aware that when the uh, next we meet uh, would be expected to be on Elysia, at wherever, of course, that might be, uh, and I will be in attendance. Uh, how can she contact you? Uh, I have taken the liberty of staying um, at the Callahan's Lodge, which is on the south side of the city. <laughs> oh, lovely. I have also been informed that that is a retreat of, of, of some manner for our kind. It is. And I do hope you will give your feedback on, on the uh, hospitality. Oh, then yes, yes, I, I will. I will not use an electronic device to do that, but I will leave a comment card at the front desk. Thank you. And so he rises up, you know, at that point, um, and you know, begins smooths down his, you know, his outfit as he rose, and he extends his hand to Trudy. She'll shake his hand. Uh, he politely kisses the top of your hand as you do. <laughs> he says, it was lovely meeting you. And I look forward to the next gathering. And he just nods to the others and walks out. She'll, she'll walk him to the door. Okay. Um, and a a after he's left, it's like been, you know, like a couple minutes at this point with you guys still in the room. Uh, you see Agea materialize like right next to you, Trudy, and she's just shaking her head. <laughs> well, Beavis it could have gone worse. Beavis is just going to look at Persephone and go, really? And she has her head in her hand, so she's not looking at anybody right now. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. It's it's it is worse. This one was not intentional. You you remember our our, our fight? Yeah. With, with the bot and I Oh you frenzied and ate one. Serpent Oh my god, I can't I even don't, say I don't, the I, word. I, I, I don't know. I don't know because I also got something of the sal the salubri. So he just kind of looks at you with the last word and goes. <laughs> I know. No. No. It hasn't been my year. <laughs> he just takes out the phone and dials the Baroness's number. Okay. It, it, he she, knows it's going to go to voicemail. And she's he just, aware. And Sophie's aware. No, she, she's not aware that the prince. No. no, she's not aware that the prince is in town, but she's aware of my problem. I was going to delineate the situation to her. You are just one aspect of what has now become a cluster real problem. No, we have. Yeah, no. Oh, so we surpassed <sighs> the cluster. Yeah, we, we we sped back by that when yeah your eyes flashed and the whole world could see. And so okay, again, still... again, no, 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 they're they're. They're off at this point. It was just one panic moment when you were looking around that you lost some control. And again, nudges Trudy and, and she leans and she says, see, I told you, they all eat salubri. Not funny. Anyhow. Trudy, Trudy is not really paying attention. Trudy is thinking about Hugo Welliver and the prince. And then Rivas turns to Trudy and goes like, so where do you suggest we come up with Elysium suitable for a visiting prince? How about the junkyard? 
Now that wouldn't reflect on Baron Sophie very well, wouldn't it? No. Would it? No, but it's deserving for a prince. Well, I, I don't disagree with you on that point. Pompous jerks. And uh, after that, he goes, and then you might want to consider the fact that somewhere along the way, we can expect the Archon to come back. And I don't think he's going to be real happy. Her. And I do believe <sighs> the Baron was also going to be contacting her. If you're talking about Lucinde, I believe Lucinde is actually a Justicar. Right. Uh, the Archon would be Alistair, the fellow that we handed over that Luker. Mm. Oh, Alistair. Oh. So, I, you know, just a subtle suggestion. Very, very expensive. Very close to the city, but not near anything that you value losing. The only thing mm. I value, well, you guys know who I value the most. Well, I'm not concerned about that right now. I'm concerned about what happens if it goes south and the prince and his escort and possibly an archon decide that they want to make a demonstration, which will end real, real badly. What about the Shakespeare Theater? That's oh, no. a very Torridor thing, don't you think? Previous, we could look into look into something like that. That's renting your, it. Oh, excuse me, Alex. <laughs> <just kicked in. coughs> but um, yeah, okay. And, um, where is Trish right now? She is at my haven. And she's safe, right? Yes, he can. Unless he summons her out of the house, none of his ghouls or his lackeys can get in. Is that what happened? What do you mean? Oh, why I'm here? Yes, the jerk summoned me. I thought you had to meet somebody before you could summon them. Hmm. No. You just Not have to have a them. name. Or their blood. Which the only way they could have had my blood is if they had gotten it from Constantine himself. If he kept any of my blood. Since I am not a traditional Tremere to begin with. Uh, how, how, how is that? What do you because mean? Because I was not created to be be a traditional Tremere. I was a personal tool. What sort of tool? One of destruction. Hmm. I was being groomed as his personal Assassin. Yeah, they make those two. So. So I was not bound to the clan. I was bound to him. Yep, that's which, so he could use her against other members of the clan. Which is a no no. Well, it's hardly your fault. It doesn't matter. I know the rules. Where is your sire now? Last I heard, he was in Seattle. Oh, lovely. That's where I stem from. I see. And my brood sister seems to have returned to him. After we worked so hard to break from his control and fled to Anarch territory. Wasn't Castile the prince of Salt Lake? Yes. Once upon a time. I meant why to ask he him. I don't know what happened to the Prince of Seattle. I meant to ask him about moving cities and I 
for slipped my mind. Perhaps this is the closest he can get to his child. Hmm. Well. But if he has my true name, you can summon somebody with a true name. Yeah. So, now that this mess is thoroughly stirred to boiling point. Well, where do we go from here? Well, there are several options depending on how he chooses to um, pursue this. It seems like the yeah! diplomatic option is the one who chooses to use at this point. But he could just as easily have turned it over to the Archon and the Justicar. So you should count your blessings because they just would have come in and taken people. Ben and you brought enough Camarilla that it wouldn't have made a difference. They could take the city from us. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what he thinks he's going to gain unless he's choosing to try and earn prestation from the Baroness. That would make it worth his time. Are you sure the treaty would allow that? Yes. Prestation? It's just accepting the fact that you owe. It's an acknowledgement of a debt. It's a boon. I'm, I'm sure if you look in there, you'll find there is nothing in the treaty that causes that to be set aside. And then once that has been issued, he can then ask within the limits of whatever the level of prostation is involved. And in this case, you're talking at probably something just short of a life boon because of the transgressions and the activity and the attempted cover up and all the rest of it. Um, it's not a life boon, but it's probably just short of that. And the harpies would have some say on that and probably the Archon and the Justicar because they're trying to balance things diplomatically, of course. So, like I said, it's, it's thoroughly stirred up and you could expect something in the way of a, a diplomatic uh, indication of how he expects it to flow. In and other words, even though we're Anarchs, we are never from under the thumb of the tower. It's not a matter of never under the thumb. Had we um, gone about things in different fashions, it would play differently. But we've given him an in. Perfect. And that's really what it comes down to. And he's a smart man. He came here. He was... Um, did not overly display his power. He came with he thought was what was adequate to what he knew, and he knew all of us. He knew enough about us to be able to judge what he had to deal with. And he brought just enough for that. Well, they have the ability to scry, so I'm going to figure that he had all of us scryed. Oh, without a doubt. Because that's the only way he would have known about me teaching Trish. Uh, you know. Now tell me about this scrying ability. Damaris would be more. Perhaps we should bring her in on a speakerphone. Mm -hmm. Oh God! And what is wrong with her? She kept squawking in my ear when I was trying to talk to her. <laughs> she right. apparently has had a um, malfunction in abilities. Going Today by. was not is... the day for her to have a malfunction. No, that no is day how... is ever enough. <laughs> All I can tell you is my impression, what I got from when I spoke to her, and um, I was like, "Yep, that she sounds." She yelled something about shiny before she hung up. Rivas would just kind of laugh. <laughs> so Trudy will Trudy will call Damaris. <laughs> and put it on speaker. Okay. Um, she said like five calls in like the last hour from you guys, and um, that's because you're not here. No. <laughs> uh, she answers, "What is he still there? Is Seth still alive? What happened?" Oh, I thought you would be scrying. <laughs> uh, no, uh, that didn't work either for me right now. 
you hear rustling around like she's like clinking of of jewels and things like that around her because she's on speakerphone are you okay yes i'm still alive for now are you okay why could you not come here Fuck. no i'm not okay <laughs> i'm peckish right now i messed up on a discipline i was practicing and it didn't go well the last thing i need and she pauses to move stuff around oh that's shiny um is to be around a prince. And as a matter of fact, he had gold threads, didn't he? Man, those looked really pretty. He did. It was Reavis a very nice real gold. Was that real Reavis gold? Reavis suggested, Trudy, that she probably wants to end the conversation before um, she frustrates the person on the other end to the point of frenzy. Uh, Damaris, uh, I wanted to ask you about that scrying ability that you uh, pull out all the time. Is that is that a clan ability? Um, it can be. It's actually more of a ritual. So it's uh, it's some sort of thaumaturgy. Uh. It, yeah, I suppose. She's just and like, you hear sort of flapping almost. So uh, no! she's some blankets. it's available to those who practice thaumaturgy? Technically, yes. So it is plausible that the Tremere would be able to do it. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to confirm... Was that it? I mean, she's still alive, but I you know, I, I'm I'm confused. If they thought that Lily was dead, if they scried for Lily, they would have seen me. So wouldn't that have told my idiot sister that I'm still alive? I think I don't that know your sister. From what I I, I recall with with what I witnessed when I did scry, um, you basically told your sister that you were her, but she didn't believe you. Well, yeah, so she scries, and it shows me. How Maybe? do we know if it showed her? Right? Again, I thought, I figured, squawk, that well, she's trying, that they're trying to watch Trish. she was with you right well i know she was well she was not at the time i was talking to my sister no she was upstairs recuperating from being torn open by a sabot but trish was still with you if, if yes, i scry she's on in her the house. i can yes. see anything that's around i can hear anything that's around so all if I got to do is know somebody that's next to you, I can scry on them and still hear what you're doing and saying. It's really kind of a moot point right now it's because just... it's done, it's over with, and it's been detected. So how it came about, you know, really? Just not horribly pertinent. No, but it's information that I, 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 I want and, and needed. That may be. There's also You're welcome to it. There is also the matter of um, an auspex ability that allows someone to uh, witness things far away. Perhaps that was employed instead. Or I don't. In I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. Done that before. She can. Uh, uh, what they call it? Uh, yes, it's soul travel or something yes. like that. Yes. But I don't know how that works against wards because are you mm. still? I don't vampiric? know either. 
I don't know. Drum, uh, I'm gonna, if it's okay, I'm gonna make a willpower roll to stay invested in this conversation because she's distracted by all the shiny stuff. <laughs> yep, go ahead. <laughs> I'm playing it up, so. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, no, I tried to warn him. I tried to warn him about um, continuing the conversation. Yeah, so just nine. Difficulty eight? Uh, or... Yes. One. Okay. Good enough. Barely. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You see her sort of walk, or you don't see her. You hear her in the distance that she's almost like tapping on the wall, like she's pecking it or something, trying to dig out, like, um, uh, take off something that was on the wall that was shiny. Like a mirror. You sure there shouldn't be somebody there with you? <laughs> no, Kyrene didn't want to be around me. So here I am at home. She tosses the mirror on the bed and it just sort of hits the phone and covers it up. You just hear a bunch of ruffling and shuffling and stuff at that point. And then the phone hangs up. <laughs> Damaris? Damaris, I can't hear you. No answer. <laughs> you see the call has ended on your end. <laughs> huh. All right, well, um, I guess that's all we have for tonight. Mm, not um, a whole lot we can do without. I'm, I'm sure you're, well, with the gargoyle standing there, I'm sure all the appropriate upper level management figures are now aware of this at some point. And um, it will be interesting to see how some of the senior citizens that have remained circumspect um, react. And I imagine we will get some interesting reactions from individuals that have been quiet for a while. That um, the Baroness and you, as Donna, might want to make sure that the, those citizens, when they go to speak out, are, are properly handled. I don't follow, Rebus. Which which you senior have, citizens are you discussing? You have people who have taken residence in the city who are at least a generation or two removed from what I am. They have been circumspect in their arrival. I have met several at Anzio's, as a matter of fact. And um, they uh, will probably not be horribly pleased at the turn of events because it, it will interfere in their ability to remain private. I think whoever has been laying low in the city probably would not be badly affected or prevented from continuing to lay low. Uh, I'm going to tell you now that I know of at least one individual that I met who will be unhappy. And which one would that be? He really doesn't recall. It's been a while since he was in Anzio's and it was way back at the start of all of this. But there was a gentleman who came in who was very much kindred and there was something going on at the lower level of Anzio's. She knows who I'm talking about. And Rivas went up and you took care of the matter. Mr. And um, he just kind of looked at Rivas and nodded his head in approval and went about his business. And Rivas didn't do anything other than bow his head and acknowledge the fact that he saw. Him. That's the other Tremere. That is. Yes. He's the other thaumaturgist in town. So there's also the Nas who's resident here. It shouldn't. Nobody but us knows he's here. So. Oh. I would not bet on it. This, yeah, no, it's not anything I would bet on, especially mean, if he has connections to NAS and other cities. Well, I suppose the, the quicker we can resolve this, uh, Camarilla issue, the sooner they can get back to their normal 
underground business. I agree. And um, I have no idea what any of you are going to convey to people like Ben and stuff and reason. I'm sorry, Persephone. I'm I'm thinking Trish. Wrong one. Trish and Ben and Remus, among others. Um, but well, Ben and I were actually planning on taking a week off. For both our sanities, um, and I may still do that, but I will be letting Ben decide after I talk to him. Um, I don't know about Remus. Remus has Remus has been struggling, I think, with his own humanity, and he has kind of pulled away from us if you haven't noticed. He seems a bit um, preoccupied with his uh, personal business. Attempt to be more human? His personal business. In any case, you know, Baroness, I hope she's adequate to the chore of playing hardball with them, because otherwise things will go badly for some of us. I have faith in her. She has her own set of obligations. It will be interesting to watch how it all plays out. And at this point, Revis would go, I have literally no more to add to this as advisor or position in the city until the Baroness chooses to address the issues. Um, so I'm going to go back to um, patrolling the uh, inner parts of the city where our kind inhabit. And I'm going to bid all of you good eve and go about my chores. And he's going to... Um, Take Trudy's hand, imitate the prince, have a lovely evening, and tr he's going to look at Persephone and go like, I truly am sorry for the way this has played out. And um, don't worry, I won't be asking you to teach me any further. That's, I was trying to prevent something like this. You were unaware of that, and I did it poorly, for which I've been rather justifiably chastised by other people. But it's still unfortunate. And as the only person here that represents the city, I choose to display the fact that we realize it was unfortunate. She's half of those I represent. She's really trying not to spill a blood tear at this point. And Revis is going to look at Trudy and he says, I will leave this in your hands. And then he bows out next to the door collects his escort and goes back about his work. <laughs> okay, how can we find out more about Prince Castile specifically? <laughs> the only one I would know would be Trish. And she right now is healing. She was hurt pretty bad. My information gatherers uh, often have a difficult time coming up with information on those in our world. I'm wondering if there's a better way. I don't know. Oh, what about the Prince of Portland? 
I mean, we did meet them. I don't think we're in any sort of position to ask them for favors against another prince. I have an asset underground in Seattle, but I haven't heard from him yet. He's been going dark. And I don't want to divert him from his current path. We could we could have been reach out to Mr. V or underground Nosferatu. He is usually a wealth of knowledge. Do you think his influence extends to Seattle? Well, he is or, or was Camarilla. And he seems to know quite a bit. Do you know how to and contact him? And if he doesn't have it, I know how he can get it. Yes, um, Ben knows how to contact him. I suppose it's worth asking. Him and Ben have a relationship of sorts. I should have left. I shouldn't have stayed. Well, we would have missed you. You wouldn't have missed, you would have missed this. Well, there's no use crying over spilled milk. Let's just focus on what we need to do now. And if they demand my life? I don't think we'll do that. She may not have a choice. I and don't see Const her doing that. And if Constantine gets involved? I worked so hard to get away from him. I can't believe she went back to him. I think the trick here is they're accusing us of something which may or may not be true. But I would be very surprised if they have no skeletons in their own closets. Well, and see, if we can I, shine I, I a light on the hypocrisy, then perhaps that will be enough to get them to withdraw the accusations. See, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I can't even think of the word I want. I was created illegally, but I don't know what with there who being was, a new prince. Who was the prince at the time? Jerome. Because she would have known that, but I don't have a name. Uh, well, we don't have... Well, because we don't have it for a background. I wasn't prepared for it. So I, mean, I don't have one. It's for, not so. It's not supremely important, but yeah, uh, she'll just get we, some name. Do we do we know what happened to him or her? No, because when I left, they were very much alive. And now they have a new prince. How and long ago was that? I've been here what almost two years now. Mm-hmm. So the prince has either been disposed or Castile undermined their position and took over, which happens in a coup. And a lot of times they would, to save their own skin, they will step down. Or they just got tired of being prince and stepped down. 
Jerome, are there Giovanni in Seattle? Uh, there is, yes. That's something I should ask Malcolm about. Perhaps they can share some gossip from their cousins. <laughs> that is possible. Uh, so with that, then, um, we're going to go ahead and stop for the, uh, the day since we got about two and a half hours in, um, <clears throat> a group is kind of like split based on everything that that's kind of happened. Um, so obviously this is setting us up for our next game, um, which will be Friday, uh, at 7 30 PM. Uh, I believe we'll be in mountain standard time at that point, not Pacific standard time. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, and then the Saturday after that, so next Saturday is our Marvel superheroes game, uh, modern age heroes. So looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. So, um, with Davey actually joining us, Davey's going to be joining a heck of a game Friday. <laughs> oh my. He's going to be about coming, walking into be, a pit of alligators. Yep. Drop roll XP walking into a, nope, a we have field. not rolled XP. Oh, yes. Do we have any birthdays? We don't have any birthdays for anybody here present for nope. November. No, right? that's why I thought. Okay. No, because Kelly's um, not. Kelly's go not ahead and actually roll part 1D4. of the game. I will most likely not be here for the next Friday game because I am. One D ten. Well, that's gonna driving. Be complicated. Four. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. One D four plus one. Well, one D four. Yep. One D four plus one. I am not going to thank you for that. Not a bit. I'm sorry. I I Two. hate being I hate being away for all these complications. But I'm, I'm driving. So as Vegas. Uh, that's two total for a convention. Yeah, uh, that's three, three total. It's one d four plus one. Oh, three. So three total. So little. So go ahead and post that in the chat. Davy Jones trying to give everybody six hundred XP. Yeah, tough. Yes, please. <laughs> it can okay. use it. So, out of character, is Baroness going to leave Revis with a set of instructions? Because you're aware of the situation. Well, I have no idea. Hopefully, uh, Ben Sophie, is. Sophie does need to. Hopefully, Ben uh, is going to be there. Ben would be the presumably. one to, to take that. Yeah, well, I'll be there. I'll help, but I'm not going to act um, like a bird again. Sophie needs to make another phone call. We didn't. We didn't get around to that. I just realized. Um, yeah. But otherwise, like Brittany doesn't know what to do about this because <laughs> Brittany has only ever played. Brittany has only played this game for like three years. So I, I, I'm understanding to, to that. I'm still going like, leave me an outline. <laughs> leave Ben and well, me we something talk to about work it with. Out of characters, make a plan. Yep. <laughs> Sophie says, "Well, we can't kill him." Because that's against... You can't float the idea upstream. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk get back it. to you. Yep. We'll get back to you on that. So go ahead and take that to Facebook chat. Um, we'll go ahead and sign off from here. Thank you guys all for watching. Uh, and fun game. Uh, super yep. unexpected stuff outside of the one yeah. thing. Uh, I love how it all kind of unfolded and... and Gave everybody chances, and the dice bot just did not agree with people. So, no, All right. no they didn't. Yep. So, I hope you guys have a good one, and we'll catch you again next time. Good night, guys. Bye. Oh, Lord. You're done.